We will now take a parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic nervous system also comprises of three things. That is preganglionic nerve fibers, ganglion, that, that is parasympathetic ganglia, and postsympathetic uh, nerve fibers. But again, to have a reference, we'll draw the spinal cord. This is the brain stem. We can call it midbrain or brain stem here. Then the medulla part and then the spinal cord. Spinal cord again we'll draw the same uh, parts as we made in case of sympathetic that is cervical region then thoracic region, lumbar region and sacral region. So let us label this. This is what we have drawn here is the midbrain this is medulla oblongata, this is cervical part of the spinal cord, this is thoracic part, lumbar and sacral part. And we have drawn this so that we have a reference from where are these preganglionic nerve fibers arise. So in case of parasympathetic nervous system, the preganglionic nerve fibers arise from two regions. One is the brain region which includes the brain stem and medulla and the second is from the sacral region. So let us talk about the origin part. It arises from the brain stem and this medulla. This is the part from where it is arising and this is the part from where the cranial nerves also arise. So these preganglionic fibers they actually arise from these cranial nerves. So let us write down the numbers of these cranial nerves from where these preganglionic fibers arise. These cranial nerves are the 3rd, 7th, 9th and 10th. Now when we were talking about cranial nerves, we wrote a short formula so that we remember which number is given to a particular nerve. So, are we able to recall what is what are the names of these three? The formula, let me write the formula here. It was O Q T square a fag wash. So first three cranial nerves they start with O. The first one is olfactory, and we had a trick also that if we bring our hand closer to our face, the first structure that touches is nose, which is olfactory. Then is oculomotor, sorry, then is optic, it goes to eyes. And third is oculomotor. So here the third one is oculomotor. Then the seventh one. So three are these, then these two, five, six, and this is the seventh one. So seventh is facial. This is eighth, this is ninth. So ninth is glossopharyngeal. And this is the tenth, that is the vagus nerve. So, one part of parasympathetic nervous system arises from the brain region, the brain stem and the medulla, especially from these cranial nerves. And that is why we uh, call the outflow as cranio. And one is coming from the sacral region. So craniosacral. So this is brain stem. And the second one is from sacral region. Sacral region of the spinal cord. And the spinal nerves which are of the sacral region. The second, third and fourth spinal nerves of the sacral region. So here the outflow will be written as craniosacral outflow. In case of sympathetic nervous system, we call the flow as thoracicolumbar. But here, because in case of parasympathetic, because the nerves are arising either from the brain part or from the sacral region. 
So the origin or outflow is craniosacral. Now let us draw these nerves here. The third cranial nerve, it arises from the brain stem and the other three, that is the seventh, ninth and tenth, they arise from the medulla. So here we will write those numbers. This is third, this is seventh, this is ninth and this one is tenth. And similarly, we will draw three coming from the sacral region. The second, third and fourth. This is second, this is third and this is fourth. And if you can see this one, that this one is going here and there is a ganglion. So the nerve fiber, which is before the ganglion, which we call the preganglionic nerve fiber, is longer and from the ganglia arises a small nerve fiber. This is postganglionic and this postganglionic is going to open into that organ. Here in the, in the organ it divides into branches. So in this case preganglionic nerve fiber is longer and postganglionic nerve fiber is shorter. It is just reverse of what we saw in case of sympathetic. In sympathetic, preganglionic fiber was very short. Then there was the trunk here and the post fiber was very long. In this case, preganglionic nerve fiber is long. Ganglion is very close to that organ and postganglionic nerve fiber, as soon as it emerges or arises from the ganglion, it divides into branches. This network, this is the network which is known as orbic plexus. And because these branches are being produced right there on the organ or in its muscles, its effect is very limited. So parasympathetic nervous system has a very limited effect. Sympathetic nervous system has widespread effect because postganglionic nerve fiber is very long. When it is reaching the organ, it is already divided into branches. Each branch is going into different parts. So effect is widespread. Here, the fiber emerges, the postganglionic, it enters into the organ. So its effect is very local or limited. So this is the post ganglionic fiber. This system has limited effect and post ganglionic fibers in their synapse produce acetylcholine as neurotransmitter and that, that is why they are known as cholinergic because they have acetylcholine whereas in case of sympathetic it was adrenergic adrenaline was the neurotransmitter here it is acetylcholine now these fibers they would go here and into ganglion and then again ganglion here so if we have to dissect and see sympathetic nervous system we see a physical structure in the form of those two sympathetic Cords. Here in case of parasympathetic, if we have to dissect it, what we need to do is we open the spinal cord, start tracing this preganglionic nerve fiber, reach up to the organ and then trace the postganglionic nerve fiber. If we want to trace the other one, we start from here, keep tracing this fiber, reach to a ganglion, a postganglionic fiber and the organ. So it is sort of, you know, scattered all over the body. So as such, physical structure to be uh, shown becomes very difficult because of preganglionic nerve fibers being very, very long. So all these fibers are long and they go to the same organs like sympathetic. Here also it would be salivary glands as were in sympathetic. Only thing is the time when these work is different. This, this parasympathetic nervous system, it works in normal condition. Sympathetic works in 
stress situation. Basically, these two systems work to maintain homeostasis, that is the steady condition of our body. So here also all organs would be innervated. So in this case, the range of these organs would be again same. Salivary glands, lacrimal glands, that is tear glands, then trachea, lungs, intestine, stomach, intestine, kidneys, bladder, all those organs. So same organ is innervated by the nerves of sympathetic nervous system as well as of parasympathetic nervous system. So what do we know about parasympathetic? The basic structure, there is a preganglionic fiber, there is a ganglion and a postganglionic fiber. In case of parasympathetic, preganglionic nerve fiber is very long. The ganglion are very close to the organ. Postganglionic fiber, as soon as it emerges, it penetrates or goes into the muscles of the organ. The origin is from the cranial region and the sacral region. So we call the outflow as craniosacral outflow. From the brain stem part, the cranial nerves which are responsible for formation of these preganglionic fibers are third that is oculomotor, seventh that is facial, ninth that is glossopharyngeal and tenth that is vagus. And there would be many branches of these also. From the sacral region that is the spinal cord we are talking of. The second, third and fourth sacral the nerves that is from this spinal cord and limited effect because many branches are not there and it is cholinergic because the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. Now we have understood the structure of parasympathetic as well as sympathetic nervous system. We will compare them once on the basis of structures and origins and all and also how they help in various organs and their functioning.